Hi there, everybody. Father Bill Holzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. I'm here with Snickers. I love this. Look at his ears. They're just sticking out there. <laughs> it's a little blurry. I have it on cinematic mode. Ooh, right? Well, welcome again to this Friday Reflection. This coming Sunday, I want to point out, is our, our new edition, our next edition, on the Synod, the Synod on Synodality. Now, I want to kind of explain some of this stuff because often we kind of think as Americans that this is our time to vote and get our voice heard and all these kind of things. I'm like, well, we obviously are going to say stuff, but it's actually not intended to so much say something as it is to listen. Now, a synod means in Greek to walk on a journey with someone. And so we've had synods before. The last couple of notable ones was the Synod on the Family and the Synod on the Pan-Amazon area. And that one especially had lots of controversy around it because lots of people were included in that discussion. Now, synods are usually just the bishops getting together to give a document to the Holy Father. What's unique about the Synod of Synodality is that it involves people of all kinds of other parts of the church, religious, uh, priests, the laity, things like that. So that's actually a wonderful thing about the Synod of Synodality, but keep in mind the title of the Synod. It's not the Synod on an issue, right? It's a Synod on itself. It's a Synod on the process of what it is to be a Synod or to be synodal. It's funny because when we first got this word, by the way, synodal is a new word in our English vocabulary. For the longest time, we were trying to figure out how do we say that? How do we say that? Synodal? Synodal? But I'm here now. I think we're getting it better at this. I think it's synodal. And we're participating in a synod. And typically, synods have been kind of more of a top down thing. The Holy Father wants to have uh, something discussed. And from there, you have the bishops getting together and maybe some experts helping them to discuss something about whatever that question's about. In this case, it's not a question about something. It's actually Pope Francis asking us to learn how to be church. And that includes not just a top-down thing, but actually a bottom-up thing where we, in our own parishes, get to reflect on some questions. And from there, those questions get then um, summarized at our parish level. And then from that parish level, they go to the diocesan level, which then brings all the parish reflections to one place. And then that gets reflected and kind of digested and summarized. And that goes to the national level, which again takes all the dioceses as well. You're getting the process here. And that gets then once more summarized. And then eventually it reaches itself to Rome, where in the Vatican, there's delegates, there's bishops, there's laity, there's religious, there's all these different people that are going to look at those things and then once again summarize them to then give a document which they can vote on, these people that are at the Vatican, that is bishops, the religious, and whoever it was that was delegated to do that, including the laity, to Pope Francis in this case. Now, I want to get back to, because I think we have this understanding, like, we're here to change teachings. Like, no, actually, we're not here to change teaching. We're here to understand what it means to be a synod. And a common word we've come and heard uh, in other kind of aspects kind of applies here. The journey is the thing. The journey is the thing. In other words, the synod on synodality is the gathering of people to talk about what it means to be gathered. Now, that can rub us Americans really wrong because we're like, wait a second, but I want to vote. I want to talk about this topic. I want it to change, etc. Well, that doesn't mean there won't be fruit coming out of this synod. The main fruit is, did we learn how to be church in this gathering of our common thoughts? In other words, did we listen to each other? Because some, in fact, this is what's going to happen on Sunday. So after the 11:15 mass here at Holy Trinity, we're asking our parishioners to come together. We will have uh, some time of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. You're going to be given some two basic questions, though I would say when you read them, they're very general, and it might be confusing for some because they're so general, we're looking for something specific. They're purposefully general. And so well, that means we have to grapple with that as people listening. 
So people are going to respond because they're going to have time to reflect on those questions. And then they're going to be put in groups. And in each group, we're going to listen. If you're in a group, let's say, your job is to share what you thought about these questions. But that's just you in a group of, let's say, 10 people. But that means you're one of 10. That means you're going to listen to nine other people and say nothing. You're not there to, at that moment, to that part of the process, to make commentary, to question or to argue that you're here to, you'll be there to listen. What is it that person said? And of course, these things will get written down. And this goes for everybody in that group. And then we're going to take a break. And then you're going to see now, how do we look at what we all said and try to summarize it? Now, what might happen? I mean, maybe you have, maybe your big beef is, um, we need to have warm water in our baptismal fonts. I'm just being silly here, okay. We need to have warm water in our baptismal fonts. I don't like it when it's cold when I put my finger in the font and bless myself. You might be the only one that said that in your, your group, your reflection group. Everybody's gonna listen to that. You have, to, you have the, uh, by being a participant, they have to listen to what your thoughts are and, and why you think it should be warm water but if nobody else is talking about that, and there's other things that are much more, let's say, common, the probability of your group saying that warm water baptismal fonts are our issue or things that we want to bring forward in our discussions probably isn't going to happen. And in fact, that means then it's not going to go to the parish level because then we have to summarize all the different groups within our our meeting after we're done to find the commonalities in that. Now, again, that might think, well, wait a second, but I want my warm holy water font issue addressed. I'm like, remember, you're part of a community. And maybe in that area, you don't hold the same sense of values as everybody else does. That doesn't mean that you're wrong necessarily, but now you've gotten it all convoluted in that, remember the goal here is to listen. And that means sometimes letting go of things too, to then honor what everybody else has said as well. So when there's a discussion, it's going to be that second part about what is the summary of what we've talked about. Being synodal is about listening and journeying. It's not about getting our way. And again, we're not there to be changing dogmas. So there may be things that come out of it when it finally gets to the Vatican that there's some things that are a great concern around the structures of the church and how we operate because that's going to be kind of the theme of this, na this next uh, level or this next uh, part two of this synodal process. The questions you're going to hear are going to be about what are some of the ways the church lives itself out, what are good things and bad things as you've experienced them, and then those will get digested and summarized here at Holy Trinity, and then it'll go to the diocese and on and on all the way up to the Vatican. So let's say parishioner that whoever that person's name is, what that wanted heated baptismal water fonts, needs to realize, and this would be probably a wise idea, that they're an island in a sea of other people's thoughts that are not where the church is going. That's not actually what the church is focusing on. And, and I would say, that person might need to rethink how out of sync they might be with the church because their idea, while they think it's important, is not clearly important to the body of the church. So from the synodal process, we can learn where we kind of stand and what is common or not common. I hope it would be, of course, that we would have much more affinity in our, our thoughts and issues or responses to these questions and we find ourselves not in coherence with that, I would say that's a good thing for that individual, whoever that he or she might be, to rethink about how they prioritize what's important. So there's going to be some great learning here for the individual. Now, as a parish, as a Holy Trinity parish, we will take these, because we have our local summaries from the previous, uh, and we will get some summaries out of this new version. I think that'll be good for us to then locally, and for me as a pastor, to look at what those things are and to see if those are things that we might want to look at to 
actually change. So change could happen. But I would ask, if you're going to be part of the synodal process, not to fixate on changing the church, but fixate on being willing to be changed. That means That is, to be a better listener. See, in our culture, we're into, let's say, politicking. Think of the people that spend lots of money to find individuals to go to, like, Washington to convince our legislators to vote this way or that way. That's not what we're doing. We are going from the bottom up, listening to each other. And I would think just by getting together, it is a win. The Second Vatican Council had a synod that followed it in 1985, a synod of bishops. And there, it was a synod on what the, what was Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council II about? What was the Second Vatican Council about? Their answer after their reflection was basically this, that we are to be in communion, that the Second Vatican Council, if there was a driving theme, this synod recognized that it was the desire to be in communion with each other. Communio is the word that came out of that synod. That is the basic overall arching theme that came out of the Second Vatican Council. So knowing that, Whenever we gather as a community locally and we do things in communion, we are doing what the Second Vatican Council has asked us to do, to become communion by coming not in just to common, but to commune with each other, to listen to each other, to share thoughts and ideas, to share our sufferings and our hopes and our desires and our loves and our struggles. So here's an example. The Pastoral Council is the group that is hosting the synod for us. And I've shared with them several times now that we may not, when we get together as just a pastoral council, we're talking about issues to kind of help me as a pastor to know what's going on. Sometimes we might make decisions. Sometimes we won't come to a conclusion or something decided. But we still have been successful. Why? Because we gathered, we heard each other, we gathered, we listened, we discussed, we had a sense of dignity and respect for each other as we discussed those things. It was Nobody was going crazy in the sense of, I got to have my way and I'm going to rant until I get my way. But no, we actually learned about each other. We grew closer to each other. We learned to, uh, to love each other better because we know each other. That's always a success. That is the spirit of the Second Vatican Council, this communio. The, the pastoral council is not necessarily a group that legislates things, but they advise me, and I really need that, to consider what we are needing to be doing, what is needed to be done. But again, and we may not come to a conclusion about something in the process of every single meeting. It's still a success. In the synod that we're going to have, if we gather and we're truly listening to each other as opposed to demanding my rights or demanding that I get my way or demanding that holy water fonts are all heated. We're missing the point. The point of this synod, the synod on synodality, is how to be church in this way of gathering at the local level and have it matriculating up. I truly believe that was going to happen because the Holy Father wants us to learn this method of how to be church because I believe that there's going to be topics that are being, going to be given to us, particular topics. And we need to know this process so that we can reflect more critically on those things. So it's maybe confusing to people, but the Holy Father wants us to learn a process, not to come to conclusions per se. And hopefully he will then be able to see how we did on these processes and we'll learn stuff in, in the process of how we did it and also, he will get a sense of where the church is about some topics. I've gone on and on. I've listened to so many videos, and maybe you have as well. I've done a lot of reading. I remember when all the documents came out about the synod. I was kind of swimming in my head about, okay, well, there's these, all these themes and things. And I'm trying to make it very simple. Remember, the synod not on liturgy. It's not a synod on the Amazon. It's a synod about the It's a synod on synodality, 
We're gathering so that we can learn how to gather because in the future we're going to need to do this. Folks, that's my thoughts to you. I'd love to hear your comments. If you want to put them in the comment section of this video, uh, it won't be possible, I don't think, in the YouTube comments, but on the, on the Facebook comments, you freely can do that. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. And I hope to have you, I hope you'll be able to come to this next weekend's Synod and Synodality. Snickers is really tired. Good boy, buddy. Love the ears. Floppy ears. Floppy ears. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.